Hello, hola. Uh, time to start our last lesson for chapter five. Okay, this one's gonna be a little bit lengthy, um, but it's one of the most important lessons that we'll have in this year. Okay, number one, calculate the slope of the following without graphing. So going back two lessons in uh, sl calculating slope as a rate of change, I showed you a formula. So slope, is the, used by the symbol m so m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 okay so the first point we're going to label x1 and y1 and our second point will be x2 and y2 okay so now we just substitute it doesn't matter which one's the x1 y1 and x2 y2 either one it doesn't matter uh, I just like to go in order, but just make sure the twos are together and the ones are together. Now we're going to substitute. So y2 is 7. Subtract y1, which is 2. All over x2, which is 5. Subtract x1, which is 1. Okay, so that gives us 7 minus 2 is 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. So the slope is 5 over 4. Okay, next one, same thing. Slope formula, x1, y1, x2, y2. Okay, so y2, negative 1. Subtract y1, which is negative 3. So subtract negative 3 over x2, which is negative 9. Subtract x1, which is negative 2. So we learned in the first differences lesson on 5.5 that when you have subtract a negative, it's positive, and subtract a negative is positive. So we get negative 1 plus 3 is positive 2. Negative 9 plus 2 is negative 7. So 2 over negative 7, or if you want to, you can rewrite that as negative 2 over 7. You can move the negative upwards. You don't have to, um, but it's just an option that you have. Okay, so 2 over negative 7 or negative 2 over 7. Okay, number two. Okay, so it says graph the following table. So we have a table of values here. So this is the first time we're gonna touch on negative values for y. So we're gonna start at zero for x and then go down to negative three. So zero and then down to negative three. So we have a point there, okay? Next is three and one. So x three, y one. Then six and five, so x is six, and then up to five. Okay, nine and nine, so nine across and nine up. And we get this there. Just gonna grab my ruler. If I could find it. I don't know, one second, oh, here it is. So now we're gonna draw a line of best fit. Okay, for Cartesian planes, when we have a Cartesian plane is four quadrants, okay? We put arrows on both ends, okay? So this one actually continues both ways. We still lead, read it left to right, so it's still increase. It's still positive graph, okay? So that's our line there. Okay, calculate the first differences and describe the pattern. So we did this in last lesson. So we're gonna make another section on our table, and then we're gonna call this one first differences. Okay, so remember we start from the bottom and subtract the one above it. So 13 subtract 9 
then 9 minus 5, 5 minus 1, and 1 minus a negative 3. Okay, so 13 minus 9, 4, 9 minus 5, 4, 5 minus 1 is 4, and 1 minus a negative 3 becomes plus, so 1 plus 3 is also 4. Okay, so describe the pattern. So the y values are going up by 5, sorry, going up by 4, and it's a positive 4, that means our graph is positive. Okay, so y values... are going up by four and it's positive four so so the graph is positive okay okay next calculate the slope and determine the y-intercept Okay, so slope is our M again, and our Y-intercept is our B value. Okay, we also know the, y, the B value is also your initial value or your, um, not starting point, initial value or like a fixed cost. Okay, so those are for real life questions. Okay, or we call it the Y-intercept so the y-intercept is where the line crosses or touches the y-axis. So if we go through this line, we want to know where it touches or crosses the y-axis. So if I'm following this here, it crosses x. This is the x-axis, but we're not looking for that. We want to know when it touches the y-axis. So it touches the y-axis at negative 3. So our b value is negative 3 because it touches or crosses the y-axis at negative 3. Oops, sorry, I'm just over here. Sorry about that. Okay, so calculate our slope. So we just did slope above, so it's y2. I'm going to go over here. So it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 okay so so the question for you so in the first question we had two points given and then the second one two points given so we're able to do x1 y1 x2 y2 but now we have one point two point three four and five points sorry i didn't graph this last one because it doesn't fit onto the graph so here we actually have five points. So, but in order to calculate the slope, we only need two. So you can actually choose any two that you want to. So you could choose this, these two points. You could use the first and the last. You could use the middle ones. You could use the last two. It doesn't matter. Okay, so we're going to use any two points. So I'm going to use the easiest ones that we could use. Um, this has a negative, so I don't want to work with negatives. So my next two easiest ones are these ones here. So we're going to have x1 and y1, x2, y2, because these are points. Okay, so filling in, y2 is first. So our y2 is 5. So 5, subtract our y1, which is 1 all over x2, which is six, minus x1, which is three. So six minus three. So our slope is five minus one is four, six minus three is three. So our slope is four over three. Okay, I'm gonna skip to this one here because we have the, I'm go back to B. So write in the equation, the equation of any line is mx plus b. So we know our m is 4 over 3, so we're going to substitute 4 over 3 into m. And then we know our b value is negative 3, so we're going to plug in negative 3 into our b value. 
So we have y equals 4 over 3x plus a negative 3. So 4 over 3x, the negative 3. Okay, just to make it a little bit better, we have a positive and a negative here. If we have a plus and a minus or a positive and negative, that becomes negatives. So just to make it better, y equals 4 over 3x minus 3. Okay, so now let's look at what is the relationship between the slope, the first differences, and the x values. Okay, so this is where I usually like to be in class to discuss this, but obviously it can't be. So our slope is 4 over 3. So remember, our slope is 4 over 3. So let's see how it relates to our first differences. So our first differences are 4. Okay, so that's 4. Okay, so how could we relate them? And then the x values here. So what's going on with our x values? We don't usually look at them. Oh, I forgot to say one more thing from last lesson. I was able to do first differences because my x values are going up in the equal amount. So they're all going up by threes. Okay, so that brings me here. What's the relation to the x values? So my x values are going up by three. So our y values are going up by 4, because our first difference is y is going up by 4, x is going up by 3, so that is our slope, 4 over 3. So that's how they relate together. The slope is your y values, or your first differences, over what your x values are going up by, in this case it is 3. Okay, because remember our slope formula it's the y's over the x's. So our y's, which are 4, over our x's, which are 3. Okay, so now you just learned a third way to calculate slope. So the one we learned in the 5.3 was to count the spaces. So here we went 1, 2, 3, 4, and then we go, so we go up 4, so it's 4. And then one, two, three to the right, so four over three. So the first way to calculate slope is to count spaces. The second way to calculate slope is using the formula. Okay, so if a graph is given, count the spaces. If we're given two points, we can use the formula. And lastly, if you're given a table of values, it's just what your y values are going up or down by, all over what your x values are going up or down by. Okay, so three, three different ways that we could calculate slope. Counting, formula, or using the table of values. Okay, so that's the relationship. Okay, now our last question here. Determine the slope and y-intercept of the following. So they're all in the form of y equals mx plus b. So our slope is always beside the x value. So our slope is 2. So m equals 2. And our y-intercept is our b value. So slope is m. Y-intercept is b. So our y-intercept is negative 5. So b is negative 5. Okay, and that's it for this question. So m is 2. Y-intercept is negative 5. Next one. Beside the x is 2 over 3, so 2 over 3 is our slope. And our b value is 2, so that is, sorry, our b is 2. Okay, moving on to c. The number next to the x is our slope, so 1 over 4, so slope is 1 over 4. Okay, and the number that follows the x is our b value, but we don't have any value here. There isn't anything there. So what that means is our b value is 0. Okay, since the, and this would be the same as direct variation. So direct variation always starts at 0. 
So direct vari variation was our first lesson, so it's y equals mx. And then partial variation was y equals mx plus b. But direct starts at zero, so this would be the same as saying plus zero. So slope one over four, y-intercept is zero. Okay, and now our last one. Again, the slope is the number next to the x. So in this case, I'm just trying to give you a trick question. So these were reversed. So the number next to the x is negative three. So our slope is negative three. And our y value is positive, our b value is positive four. Okay, so that concludes the lesson for today. So again, calculate slope without graphing. We use the formula. Okay, if, if we have a graph, we can count slope by doing rise over run. And you can pick any two of these points that you want to, and you'll come out with the, the slope formula. So up and across, forward three. If you're given a table of values, see what your y values are going up or down by, which is your first differences, so four, over what your x values are going up by, which is three. So we have four over three here and here, and from the formula. So formula from, sorry, from the formula, from the graph, from the table. And lastly, to identify slope and y-intercept from, from a equation, the number next to the x is your slope, so 2, 2 over 3, 1 over 4, and negative 3. And the other number is your y-intercept. So here, negative 5, 2, and 0. Okay. Homework for this lesson, page 284, number 1, 2, 3, 7, 9b, 10b, and 13. 1 to 3, 7, 9b, 10b, and 13. I hope everyone had a great weekend and we will have an assignment in the next couple days. And I'll see you guys later. Take care. Bye.